Today's episode is dominated by the approved merger with Solar City and the following Q&A. Strap in for another long one. Here are your Tesla tidbits for November 17th, 2016. Today was the day for the official shareholder vote on the merger between Tesla and Solar City. I got a chance to tune into the live stream today to see the results where shareholders overwhelmingly approved the merger, voting about 85% in favor of the merger. The official portion of the meeting was over within a matter of minutes, calling the meeting to order, declaring the polls open, then declaring them closed shortly thereafter, and disclosing the results based on the proxy votes that had already been tallied. Following this, Elon answered some questions for folks, which shed some light on Solar Roof and a little bit on Model 3 as well. Elon stated in the facts section of the meeting that Tesla believed it possible that the Solar Roof product could actually cost less to install than replacing with a traditional roof. The electricity savings are just gravy. If this is truly the case, Elon's statements asking why would you buy anything else truly are rhetorical questions. We won't know until folks actually get this installed, but boy is this a promising development. Late in the presentation, Elon elaborated a bit on the makeup and properties of the tiles. Elon specifically called out that most of the cost of the traditional ceramic or concrete tiles is in the transport component. The Tesla tiles actually weigh from one-third as much to one-fifth as much as ceramic or concrete tile, and they're stronger. This is a key considering shipping the product on two fronts. Due to the lesser weight, there's a huge cost savings in shipping, and due to the extra strength, the number of broken in transport is less as well, driving down the overall cost of the product significantly. The roof product is expected to begin being installed in the summer of 2017, and orders will determine which style goes first. The most popular is going first, with the following styles rolling out in three-month intervals per Elon. Elon also took the opportunity to continue to dispel the myth that Tesla relies on subsidies to thrive. Elon points out that the zero-emission vehicle credits are not as profitable to Tesla as they are to its opponents. Tesla can sell the credits, but they only get about half of the $5,000 face value on average per credit. Opponents that produce gas-powered vehicles receive the full credit because they can take the full $5,000 to offset the cost of the gas vehicles that they produce. As to the federal tax credit for people buying the cars, due to the phase-out, nothing is being relied upon. All manufacturers will eventually exhaust it, again leaving everyone on the same level playing field. Then we had a rather interesting comment on Model 3. The question was posed as to why those with Model 3 deposits won't be included in free charging. The consensus for the most part has been that Model 3 would simply be lumped into the new system of supercharger credits with Model S and Model X. However, rather than at all referencing the new credit system, Elon gave a different answer entirely. Quote, From the beginning, we said free charging is not included in the Model 3. Free unlimited charging is not included. So free long distance is, but not free local. It's just it becomes really unwieldy for people to use gas sta- use the gas station approach for electric cars. Cars should really be charged where you charge your phone. But then you just need to solve the long distance problem, which is what the super- supercharger stations will do. End quote. Very curious that he didn't just mention the new credit program and instead made this differentiation between local and long distance charging. I could certainly hear the argument that this is what the credit system is meant to enforce, but why not just say it would share the same credit system? The following point lets us know a loose time frame of when we might find out. So following that previous question, a question was asked that was inaudible probably to most folks, but if you throw on a pair of good headphones and listen, you hear clearly the question was asking what the qu- schedule was for the third reveal of Model 3. Elon responded saying, quote, Today is not the time for that announcement, but I mean it's probably, I don't know, beginning of spring or something like that, three or four months from now, end quote. So all of this is fantastic, but the huge question mark is how the market will react to the decision. Throughout the day, Tesla closed up $4.73 a share, and as it sits as I record the show, the price is up another six per share in after-hours trading. We'll see if the price holds or not, but personally, I can't fathom it will. Between the initial reaction to the announcement of the merger dropping the price at the time, and the price being unable to hold after full self-driving capability is announced being built into every new vehicle, the market doesn't seem to be terribly impressed with anything Tesla does lately. I mean, really, what more do you want than the car legitimately driving itself and being the first manufacturer demonstrating this fact in real-world conditions? Finally, this deal isn't officially closed yet, and when it does, it will dilute Tesla shares by more than 7%, which in theory would also send the share price down. I'm always of a mindset of preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, so here's hoping for the best.
Everything today is based on the live stream provided by Tesla for the special meeting. The links provided are for both the audio and the video, as I'm unsure as to how long the video will remain since the link to it is rather generic and could be used for any shareholder meeting. But the audio should remain in perpetuity. If you get some value out of this show, please consider supporting me at patreon.com slash tesla tidbits. Even a quarter a month would be very much appreciated. Thanks as usual to my super patron John Waltower for his support. You can support the show for free through positive reviews on the major media services where you find the show and by simply spreading word of the show to other Tesla lovers. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits. That's it for today. I know it was a doozy. Hopefully I'll see you back here again tomorrow. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.